What's up, you guys? Marty Schwartz here, GuitarJams.com, hanging out with one of our very first friends that we ever had, Papa Stash. Yeah! <laughs> yeah! Uh, let you guys know real quick, uh, Brett's going to be picking three comments to win his brand new beginner acoustic DVD set. So there's a link for it down in that link down there. We're going to pick three comments to win that set for free. Real excited. Super excited. You got your own set, and it's a, it's a takes you from grabbing the guitar for the first time, six DVDs, bonuses, memberships to Guitar Jams, memberships to Next Level Guitar, all that stuff coming yes. your way, teaching people how to play guitar. Yes. And right now, we're going to give you a free lesson. So three comments. Funnier the better. Yeah. Love <laughs> funny. <laughs> Good times. So three comments, and then uh, Brett's going to break down, since you know his set is a beginner set, we're going to do a beginner progression. I was playing it without the capo. It had some tricky bar chords. This you can play the exact same thing by putting the capo on there and use all the, the more beginner yep. chords. So we'll break it down. Magic. Yes. Yes. <laughs> all right. So now you get to work. All right. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to do some open position chords. Get your capo on the fifth fret. And then we're going to basically kind of do an inspired song. We're going to have two different parts. We're gonna have a beginning kind of intro part and then a verse part. So let's break it down and we're gonna to try to use, as a little addition, chords with similar shapes. So for the beginners out there, which the you know DVDs are for, really will help you know make chords more accessible for you. All right, so here we go. Let's break down the beginning. Okay, so right off the bat, what we're gonna do, A minor chord, and we're gonna do, the next chord is gonna be an F chord. I'm gonna do a little bit different of a shape, right? But it's basically the same chord, and all we're gonna do is we're gonna add the same fret, but the string above it too. And then, since the song kinda has a cool vibe to it, a nice, nice um, kind of droney vibe, I'm actually going to leave the bottom part of the F chord open as well. So it's going to have an open E string, which is going to make it even easier. <laughs> Alright, so, so far, here to here, and then you can keep this finger in the same fret, and you're just going to go down one. You can actually keep this finger where it's at, which is on the G string second fret, and then we're going to go pinky, or not pinky, ring finger rather, to the third fret, B string. Okay, so get in your mind what fingers have to move and what fingers can stay just about where they're at. Okay, so just go over those chords really easy. Now we need to add some rhythm to it. So we got... Okay, so the A chord, I'm gonna go down, 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 up, down, up, down, down. Okay, then I'm gonna go up to this F chord and just hit two down strokes. So we got. Now the D minor chord, Okay, so when we put that all together, we got. Now in a song, that would be, you know, something that might repeat as a chorus as well. A lot of intros in songs these days are also the chorus progression. So the only thing really that you would do to differ that is to break away from that sound just a little bit to what would be a verse section. Now in this particular instance, what we're going to do is take that F shape we were doing and we're just going to move these three fingers up a group of strings. I'm actually going to hit all the other strings open. Okay, so we got... Alright, 
So from there, and I'm gonna keep the same strum pattern for each chord. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start off again with that A minor chord. We're gonna come up here. Then we're just gonna go down a group of strings. We're gonna go back to that F and we're still gonna keep that E string open. And now instead of going to D minor, we're gonna go to D7 chord. Right? Now, the only thing you're doing differently, if you're familiar with an open D chord, it's kind of the reverse of that. Instead of this finger being on the third fret, it's actually gonna be on the first fret. Same strings, D string down, the whole bit. Now our strum pattern, down, 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 up, down, up, down, 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 up. Again, down, 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 up, down, up, up, down, down, up. See, and you just, the, the key is to say it wrong the second time to really confuse people. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. So here we go slowly. There it is. Down, 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 up, down, up, down. There we go. And I'm going to keep that same pattern for the next chords. And that would be what the verse, per se, would be, right? So if you put the two together, you're going to end up having something like... Now one other side note of things that you can do is you can experiment right, with playing the top half or the bottom half of the chord. Now this is a little bit more of an advanced technique or something you'll learn a little bit later, but might as well start now. And you can get different sounds. Just when you're practicing, play around with playing the top part of the chord, the bassy part, or the treble part. and going back and forth and get that interplay in between them really creates a dramatic effect even though you can keep a very simple chord it really opens up the sound a bunch and really creates dynamics which is great on an acoustic instrument because you can be so expressive on it but at the same time right there's not an overabundance of like if you're playing electric there's pedals and all these other things that you can do to do something to the sound this is a really awesome way to achieve the same kind of thing on an acoustic instrument and really create some dynamic pull and, and different sounds for a simple chord. Right? So experiment with that. Remember it's really Simple chord shifts with your fingers. A lot of the chords are very, very similar. So really minimize that movement and really get that chord movements. You know, don't take your fingers up very high. Keep it as low as you can and really practice efficiency and movement. And that'll really, really help and pay off in the long run. So, all right. So one of the things that we can do to add a little, you know, pizzazz in there is at the very end, just when they're like, I've heard this like 40 times before, we'll throw in a new chord for some total excitement. So, say we're doing the beginning again. Let's just throw in an E major chord and build up on it. We can do all downstrokes. Four, five, 
So if you want to do a new chord, we've already gotten really close using this chord. Just move it. Use an E-shaped chord and you are in business. And suddenly now you've added excitement and they're ready to hear the song just like it was played in the beginning. But they've been rewarded by listening thus far. So check that out. Try throwing in an extra chord like an E major. Give it a shot. Brett, great job. Thanks, Marty. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. <laughs> <laughs> it was, I did too. It was very insightful and informative. I had a good teacher. Oh, nice. <laughs> We can't wait to see uh, <laughs> the three comments that you pick for them to win that free set down there. Yes. And uh, thanks for all your support, and uh, we'll see you guys again real soon. Hey!